Okay, so in part one of this project, what we're going to do is make sure that our project folder is set up correctly and that our HTML document is good to go. So I can't show you the step because I can't record on my um, teaching computer, so I can't show you how to copy from the M drive, but you should have copied and pasted a folder from the M drive that's titled Photo Editor Project. Put it on somewhere like your desktop, perhaps in your documents. The first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to rename this so it has your name in it. So it should say first name, last name, photo editor project. If you click inside the folder, you're going to see four different things. You're going to see an index.html file. This is where we're going to write all of the HTML for our project. So remember that HTML is used to add content and organize and group that content on a web page. You should see a script.js file. This is going to be the file that contains all of our JavaScript, which is going to make our web page interactive. Um, we will actually be linking this JavaScript file in our index.html file in this part. You're also going to see a styles.css file. This is the this CSS file is where we're going to write all the CSS for our project. Um, it will be linked in the index.html file. And remember, CSS is what we use to style our web page, so add things like style the font and the text and the images, change the layout of the items on the web page. The last thing you're going to see in this folder is cayman 4.1.2.4.m full, full or min.js. Um, this is the cayman.js API library file that we're going to be using. So we're going to learn a little bit more about what APIs are later on the project, but basically this file allows us to use a lot of um, shorter commands to do more complex things with image editing. And we will also be linking this in our index.html file. Once you have renamed your project, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and open up a uh, text editor, so either Programmer's Notepad or Atom, depending on what you have on your computer. Then you want to go to File, open and you're going to open the index.html file. You want to make sure that you're opening the project folder that you just renamed that's located on your desktop and that you're not trying to open something on the M drive. So open index.html. It should be blank. Um, and what we're going to do now, we're on step two, is we're going to set up the boilerplate or the basic framework for any website. Um, but we're going to do that right here in our index.html file. So you want to start out by first telling the browser what document type this is, which is an HTML file, by saying doc type HTML. The next thing we want to do is have our opening HTML tag. I like to go ahead and add the closing one right after so that I don't forget to do that. And then I'm going to put a space between. The other pieces that we need for our boilerplate, I'm going to tab in so it's easy to read. We need a head tag, and this is going to contain all of the, we can call it metadata for our web page. Um, it's where we're going to be linking our CSS, our JavaScript files, and our fancy Google fonts, and where we'll also put in the title of our website. After this closing head tag, I want to put the opening body tag. Remember that the body tag is going to contain all the content that we want to display in our web page. Um, we'll get to that part on part two. Now, inside this head tag, I'm going to hit enter and tab on in. We want to actually add a title to our website. This title is not going to display in the browser, but it will display in the browser tab or the toolbar of your browser. So we'll start with the title tag, the opening title tag, and then we'll put the title of our app. For now, I'm just going to call this Jackie's Photo Editor, but you could be a lot more creative than me. And then we need our closing title tag. Let's go ahead and save our pro progress. Now, if we wanted to see what this looks like, remember we click inside our folder and double click on the index file. We can see that um, the tab name says Jackie's photo editor, and that's what title is going to change. But there's nothing inside of the browser window. Title is only for this browser tab. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and link our style sheet, our JavaScript files, and our Cayman.js files. So I'm going to go ahead and to do this, I'm on step three. We're going to say link rel equals, whoops, equals 
style sheet type equals this is a text slash CSS file and the link now href equals styles dot CSS close that out and I'm just gonna double check that this is the name of my file yes this is named styles dot CSS so that's what I should have inside these quotes save that now we're gonna move on to step four which is gonna be linking the JavaScript file so basically all of these links are going to open these files when we want to decide what styles to apply and what JavaScript to run. So we'll say script type equals text slash JavaScript src equals quotes again script.js we need a closing script tag for this one save that. I'm going to double check that that is the name of my file. Yep, script.js Remember capitalization and things like that count. All right, so now we're on to step five. We're going to go ahead and link the Cayman um, API library, that, that script file. So script type equals text slash JavaScript src equals. And this is a slightly longer link, so you want to make sure that you're typing carefully. Cayman dash 4.1.2.old.min.js Closing script tag. Save that. And if we were to refresh our page, we're going to see that nothing is showing up in our browser, which is what we expect. Um, we'll be able to test out whether these links are working later when we are trying to call our JavaScript. So now in step six, what we're going to do is you should have picked out a font that you want to use for the text or maybe multiple fonts that you wanted to use. So we actually need to link those in between the head tags as well. So to do that, go to Google Fonts. And go ahead and pick out the font that you want. So let's say that I wanted to use this font right here, Railway. I'll press a little red plus sign. Then this is going to pop up in the bottom. If I click on it and click this arrow, it's going to take me to this font family. What I'm looking for is this embed code. So whenever I want to use this uh, font, what I'm going to do is I need to copy. So select it, control C, this link, and it needs to go in between the head tags of my HTML document. Save that. When I'm ready to use my CSS later, I'm actually going to use this code in my styles.css sheet, depending on what font I need to use. So if you're using more than one font, go ahead and find those links, copy and paste them. When you're all done, save your changes, and that's the end of part one.